Today, I want to talk about the five do's and five don'ts on my list of starting a business that will help you be successful. There's probably 55 or 550 or 5,500, but these are the five important do's and the three important don'ts. And if you go to my website, seanhays.com, you can actually see a much more expanded version of these and schedule a time for up to a 30 minute call to talk to me about your business at no cost. The first one is start your business with more money than what your business plan thinks you need. It's so much easier to get capital and debt when you don't need it than when you do. The terms and availability will change quickly and you don't want your back against a wall. Number two, build a team. Even if it's just you and you only think it's going to be you, you have to have a team. Your professionals are a team and I have a video on that, but you want them you need them to be part of your team and eventually you'll need others. So think about a team from day one. Number three, cultivate a culture. In the beginning, the culture may just be you and the culture you bring, but with each person that interacts with you or joins your team, your culture changes little by little and focus on that culture and focus on creating it in a manner that cultivates a result you want. Number four, focus on cash flow. My father was a successful businessman but he didn't really give me a lot of guidance, mainly because he was 42 when I was born. But what he did tell me was, Sean, it's all about cash flow. And he's right. My brother-in-law once bought a company and he had all these receivables, but they ran 120, 150, 180 days and his payables wouldn't wait that long. So you have to focus on cash flow. Number five, set goals. And when you set goals, use this structure for your short and your long-term goals. Smart goals. They are specific, measurable, achievable, rewarding, and time-bound. If you look at all your goals on that basis and you view them as dynamic, if you're constantly reviewing and changing them to reach the goals and objectives you want, you'll be more successful. Now the don'ts. Don't have a partner or a shareholder unless you absolutely have to. And there are times you absolutely have to. But when you do, make sure that you have so many things in writing because there's times that that becomes very important. Secondly, make sure that that partner is a person who can give you strength where you're weak, that your, your strengths are his weaknesses and his strengths are your weaknesses. And if you have a shareholder, please set boundaries. Boundaries are so important. Two, focus on your customers, not your competition. So many companies focus on their competition when they should focus on their customers. I watched a webinar recently and the, the speaker had just been to both Microsoft and Apple. And at Microsoft, he said they were consumed with Apple, their competition. At Apple, they only ask about customers. What were their wants and needs? That's the focus you want. Don't care, don't worry, you don't need to know. You might wanna be aware, of course, but it's not about your competition, it's about your customer. So get the right C. And the third thing that I want to stress is don't let perfect stand in the way of good. Unless you're sending a man to the moon or you're performing heart surgery, you probably know to be perfect. Is 80% enough? Is 90% enough? Is 95% enough? Know that gauge. Run your business based on that gauge, not on perfect. Because so many people don't get to the right place because they're trying to create perfect. I invested in a software company when software companies were big. And we never got to the goal line because our founder kept trying to do perfect when all he needed to do was be good and get to market.